Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Uh, today we want to talk about the tractor that we have here on the farm and more specifically kind of a product review of a gadget that I recently got for the tractor. Um, what we want to talk about is a device that's called a Zane Thing or Zane Thang as he calls it in the, uh, the gentleman that invented it. The tractor that we have here is mostly a 9N Ford tractor. It's got pieces off of a, a 2N as well. It was, it's probably mostly around uh, uh, 1939 to 42 or so is the, the years of the tractor, but it's pieces of a lot of different tractors put together. This tractor has what's called the Ferguson system on the back. It was invented by Harry Ferguson in a handshake agreement with Henry Ford. They put it on the tractors that Henry Ford was building, along with some other tractors, the Ferguson tractors as well. So right here is the device that I want to talk about and do the product review on specifically. Uh, this is called the Zane Thing, or Zane Thang as he calls it. Um, it was invented by a gentleman named Zane Sherman, and I can't remember the exact town that he's from. But he sells these on uh, the internet. You'll, if you just Google Zane thing depth control, uh, you'll be able to find it no problem. Um, he sells them for a hundred dollars. They work great. The reason that they work great is he's put a lot of time into figuring out the exact angles and dimensions and everything that um, make this product work correctly and do the the job that it's supposed to do. Um, the tractor is obviously not running right now. Um, but what happens is this is your your up and down on the tractor right here. Um, when I push this down to make the implement on the three-point go down, typically it would just drop. There isn't really a good way to hold it at a certain depth that you want to do. Um, two different things that I use this for on the farm are the ditcher for cleaning out the irrigation ditch and then the three-point mower which we have on today. And the three-point mower is probably a little oversized for this tractor, but I've kind of figured out a way to make it work, um, and I'll show you that today. Um, so how this device works, like I said, you pull up or down, and then it holds that position. And it's also attached to the three-point here. So as you push the handle down, that causes the three-point to want to go down this direction, straight down which then pulls the handle, once it gets to the point that you've set it at, it gets the handle back and then tries to raise it up and then in, in turn it just holds it at that exact point. So this is the device right here, it works very very well. Um, right now I've got the three point mower behind the tractor and I set it up a little bit differently than most people do. The mower has the three-point connection on there. Um, the two lower uh, lifts, I use those. I do not connect the top link. And my pasture is totally flat, so it really doesn't have an issue with that. Um, it doesn't need it. And what works out well is the tractor is holding the front of the mower, and then the tail wheel is just dragging behind. So it's not exactly the way it's specifically designed to be but the tractor can do a lot better because it's not trying to hold that mower up in the air which is then taken away from your steering and making the front end really light and then all that extra weight that it's trying to hold up in the air it's basically just dragging it behind it and then it has the drive shaft which we'll connect here in a few minutes and uh, show kind of what it looks like running so i'm going to go ahead and start the tractor and then you can kind of see, I'll lift it up and lift it down. I don't know if you'll be able to hear very well when the tractor's running. But I'm going to lift it up and down and then kind of show how it will hold that position. So again, not sure if you can hear over the noise of the tractor. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the implement up. It's going to raise. And then it's going to stop at the location that the preset right here is set. And what a guy could do is he could even draw some lines on here with a Sharpie or something to show the different depths that, that, it, that you want it to be at. And then back down, again, we push it down, and it will go to that spot, and it will stop right there. 
so you kind of can get a feeling for where you'd like it at and then once you've got it set there you can just mark it with a sharpie like i said right here and then you can reference right back to that same exact point all day long for doing whatever you need to do So as you just saw, the PTO shaft just came to a stop. The tractor had been shut off for some time and the PTO shaft was still spooling back down. So what allows us to do that and on and is necessary on a 8N, 9N, and 2N tractor is the overrunning clutch that's right here in the front. I picked that one up off eBay and it just goes in the link in between the PTO shaft and the, and the tractor's PTO output. Uh, it allows, if in a typical situation, if you stop the tractor, the PTO will also stop. But when you have a large mower like this that needs to slow down, it would push the tractor and potentially break something while it was trying to stop that abruptly. So this overrunning coupler just releases and ratchets basically until it comes to a stop. And this brings me to another thing I want to talk about is safety when you're around a PTO shaft like this. A PTO shaft is typically turning at 525 revolutions per minute, which is about 8.75 revolutions per second. If a person was to get up there and get their clothes tangled in it, or their hair tangled in it, or their arm or something like that tangled in it, um, you would be wrapped potentially around that shaft eight and three quarters times in one second. Basically faster than you can think you'd be tied up in it. And there's many, many cases where people have been killed or seriously injured by those. This one's obviously not in the best of shape. It's missing the protective covering that's supposed to go on here. That broke a few years ago and never was replaced. But PTO shafts are definitely not something to mess around with. Anytime the machine is running, you should never be in the area of it. And anytime you're around it, not have loose clothes, loose hair, or anything that could get tangled up in that. I want to talk about another accessory that I picked up for this tractor. Uh, originally it had an oil filter that was a canister so you had to take the lid off and you had to replace the filter that went inside the canister. Um, the problem with that is it was a big mess it was always dripping all over the place when you change it. Um, really a pain to deal with. So I bought this adapter plate off of eBay. Um, a gentleman had made that. Um, they picked it up on there. I can't remember what it cost exactly. It wasn't very much but it allows you to use this Motorcraft FL-1A filter um, which is a whole lot easier you can pick those up at the auto parts store no problem um, the other thing it makes uh, it works out better for is there's actually a uh, check valve inside that filter that doesn't allow the oil to flow back according to the instructions um, so it does seem like it gets oil pressure a lot faster with that the other kind of neat thing I did uh, when I bought this tractor it had been converted to a 12 volt system um, I had to replace this starter and replaced it with a 12 volt starter but it was still hitting the the ring gear so hard because it was starting so quickly that it was really starting to tear things up so what I did is I had this old uh, spring right here it's an old uh, starter Bendix spring off of one of my Model T's um, that one's all bent up and really not good to use anymore but what I did is I put it in the line you can kind of see there 
put it in the line between the uh, wire that supplies the starter and the starter pole there and that acts as a resistor and kind of slows that current down a little bit more so you can kind of uh, see how that would work um, definitely has been a, a good improvement there and takes a lot of the stress off the starter the other thing I put on this tractor that's been kind of handy is I had one of these light bars laying around that are popular people putting them on their trucks now and I put it up here on the bracket that holds, or that the, excuse me, that the front end loader would attach to. And it's worked out pretty well if I need to light up an area that I'm working out in the pasture at night, or if I'm doing something and it starts to get dark, it works out real well. And then on the back of the tractor, I also put a small little LED light as well that illuminates where the implement sits. And so that works really well. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, when we've been working, doing stuff late at night, anything we need to do, works out real well. So that's just kind of a review of the Zane Thing depth control for the 9N and 2N tractor. And then also talking about the tractor that we have here on the farm. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Please like comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time at Milo Farms.